Hey guys, Dino Fries here. And um, I wanted to do a little quick review of Cult of the Lamb, which came out a couple months ago now. I got this game actually right when it came out. I was actually really looking forward to it. I remember I saw it on Devolver Digital's like showcase of games coming up a while back. And I saw that and I was immediately into it. It just looked great from the trailers. And so it came out. Again, I bought it right away. It was 25 bucks. And um, let's talk about it. First of all, I played the whole game on my Steam Deck. I'm happy to report that the Steam Deck is awesome, by the way. Highly recommend. It runs great on the Steam Deck. So if you're thinking of getting this for um, the Steam Deck, I can let you know it's it runs really good. I had no problems at all. And so yeah, so now let's talk about the game. So the meet, like the moment you start this game, you're pretty much sucked in. The introduction is short. The tutorial, they don't really have to teach you much because the, the gameplay is relatively simple. So I like games that where you, you start it up and there's not much of a learning curve. You just, you're right in. So the, the game is kind of split into two parts. There's, there's the roguelite dungeons and then there's a town management system. So the the dungeons, again, they're roguelites. So as in you do a dungeon and if you beat it, you unlock the next floor. If you die, you have to do it over. But I found that even when you die, it's not it's not too punishing, which I liked by the way. I, I don't really like roguelites that punish you badly for losing um some of them i get it. like hades i get it uh hollow knight i don't get why they punish you so much in hollow knight but that's neither here nor there so basically when you die you go back to the beginning obviously but you actually get to keep 75 percent of your resources so like you get money and resources in the dungeons and you get to keep 75 percent of it or else or like you lose a quarter of what you found. So you still progress, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, like the the uh, downsides to dying is not that bad. Combat wise, it's pretty simple. You just, you know, you attack, you dodge, and you have like magic, you have like spells that you pick up. So you go into a dungeon and you get to choose, well, no, I'm sorry, you don't choose. They give you a weapon and they give you a spell. And then sometime, somewhere in the dungeon, uh, I think always once, sometimes two or three times, you're able to swap your weapon as well as your spell, or it's like one or the other. And like, for example, some of the weapons I found were kind of shit <laughs> and others were like dope. Like I kept, every time I used the daggers or the claws, I was not in for a good time. And then the sword was pretty neutral, and then anytime I got the hammer or the axe, I pretty much decimated. And then as for spells, you know, there's a bunch of spells. Some of them suck, uh, others are good. I, there weren't any spells in particular that I uh, gravitated towards. I just usually picked up like ranged spells. You know, those were good. So yeah, the combat's simple. I didn't mind it, but it was simple. If you're looking for something more, you know, complicated and challenging uh this game is not it i would say but i thought it was i thought it was fun it, it, it felt more casual and not too not too serious and then the other part of the game is the talent management system so you'll get money and resources in these dungeons and you also recruit followers to join your cult and then you you either lose at the dungeon or you win and you go back to your cult and then you build up your cult. So that means building like buildings and just stuff. And then like your your cult members will harvest resources. So they'll like chop wood, uh, they'll mine for stone. You can send them out on expeditions to get more resources than you like at the at, at your base you you deliver sermons and then you unlock more buildings then you do rituals which are like special kinds and so like and then you choose 
um, doctrines. So basically, like, you, you get to kind of build the cult where you want it. You only can go, like, one or the other, for example. Like, the doctrines, uh, they tell you, like, oh, do you want to be... Um, one of them is, like, do you want to respect the elders or have a cult that hates old people? So basically, if you have an old person, if you have an old cult member, they get they grow up, by the way. these Every day they get older and older and eventually they become elderly. So you get an old, if you get an old cult member, then you get like more faith, uh, or you can, I think, I think like sacrifice them or something because your cult is like all about being young and stuff. And then like, they like that stuff. So you only get to choose like one or the other, but you kind of do get to build your cult in, in your own way. If you want to be like ruthless or if you want to be like, you want to build loyalty and then there's rituals. So like you unlock, again, rituals. So for example, you can hold like a big feast and fill up your cult members hunger, or you can hold a ritual where you, uh, where you revive one of your cult members that died. So uh, you, you see I'm rambling, right? Cause there's a lot to the town management system. It's so much bigger than the dungeon aspects. It's, it, 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 it almost, it's almost a shame that like they couldn't have maybe like maybe dumbed down the town management system or like built up the dungeon the dun like the combat the fighting part more you know because they don't they, they're not they're not equal like at the end of the game when I when I faced the final boss I, I I unlocked like all like the tiers of the cults, like the the buildings and the unlockables and stuff like that, but I wasn't able to actually unlock and build all of the things that I could have, that were like available. I'm pretty sure I only had like half unlocked. So I only built what I needed, you know, and then I beat the game and that was that. There was a lot of stuff I didn't build and get into with the cult, with the town management part. Let's talk about the art style really quick. 10 out of 10, like this game is, like it's not like graphically impressive of course but i don't know it's just like it's just cute and i love the art style i'm into that kind of like cartoony stuff you know i think they did it fantastic the sound effects are cute the music they're not really the the music is music's fine nothing crazy but fit fit the ambiance like they fit it well yeah not no complaints about the art style for sure and I would say like just concept wise, I think they nailed it too. I mean, the whole cult thing, there's really, they really, they really did it well. You know, you're not, you're not just a lamb who controls a cult. Like everyone's an animal, you know, there's also like, um, there's also like other places besides like the cult, besides your home base and the dungeons, there's also other places you visit. Um, for, and there's also like a card game you can play, which was fun. Not a card game. It's like dice. And I don't know. Like I'm just, I'm just trying to say like the whole, the whole, like, an, like a world full of animals who are like, some are good, some are bad. And they're just kind of like in this like weird fantasy forest thing. It, it, it's just, the concept is great. You, you do kind of get lost in the world. It's very, it's very fun to be in. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I really liked the, the, the concept. And there's also like, there's also, there's like fun little things that happen, you know, in the game that, that add to that. For example, like one of my followers, I think lot like lost all their faith in the cult. And then they left the cult, which I didn't know was possible. And they stole all my coins. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's cool stuff like that. It's not, there, there are certain systems in the game where they have like, things that happen you could murder a follower for example like i could have murdered that follower and you have to murder them in the dead of night when everyone else is sleeping so this way they don't find out and like get scared what else do i want to bring up i mean there's a lot of like little cool things that happens in my playthrough for example i had this one follower uh it's like a reindeer named pajul they they named the you could name the followers whatever you want. 
you can customize what animal and color you want, but I just took whatever they named uh, my little reindeer follower. Pajul, my boy. Let me tell you about Pajul. So I accidentally killed Pajul. It was an accident. I gave him bad food. He got sick. He died right there on the spot. <clears throat> so I, I, was, I was heartbroken. Then I revived him. Then I married him. Then he died. Then I revived him again. And I made him the tax man. So he would go around collecting taxes from all the other followers. And homie lived... I think he lived for like... I forgot what his age was. But everyone else was like in their 20s or 30s, maybe 40s. Pajul was like 90 or something. Because <laughs> I didn't really care about my other followers, but I kept letting Pajul live on. All in all, Talmad, the cult system is great. It does get stressful at first, when you, when you, but like you figure it out and it doesn't really get that stressful. And at some point during the game, like after the halfway point, you wind up getting a lot of resources and money, so things get less stressful. Like, if a follower dies or gets old or whatever, and then they die, you bury them, you move on. You get so many followers at the end of the game. Um, it, so it doesn't get very stressful at the end. And then, I mean, at, at one point though, like towards the end, I kind of just wanted to beat the game because I felt like the town, again, like the cult, I was pretty much good. Like you're able to, you can upgrade your cult in a way where it helps, like you do stuff to help you out in your dungeon runs. And I was able to just like upgrade everything that I needed to, to make my dungeon runs more successful. Cause like you can upgrade, for example, like you can take followers with you into the dungeon eventually. And you also are able to, you're also able to upgrade like your health and your mana and you're able to unlock better weapons and spells so eventually i was like all right i, I i'm good like and then i just i beat the game and that was that and again like i said didn't really unlock and do everything i could have with the cult but i beat the final boss and i was kind of you know done with the game then a little bit about me um i don't i'm a i'm not a completionist whatsoever I just like to play a game and enjoy it and then if I and then just like keep going with the storyline. I'll do side quests, you know, but I'm very much like unless the side quests are rewarding or just fun or contribute to the story in some important way, I usually just stick to like the main quest and keep going. I beat the game, great, I move on to the next game. That's just the way I play. And yeah. That was Cult of the Lamb. I mean, I will say, like, it was easy for me to put Cult of the Lamb down. It was fun, and I enjoyed playing it. I'm glad I played it. Worth the $25 for sure. And I recommend it. But it's not a masterpiece. And that's about it. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that review. And, yeah. See you in the next one. Bye.